This is rental car number 91, and today I'm driving the 2017 Chrysler 300C. So before we get started, I have a little confession to make. I actually filmed this one quite a while ago, but I wasn't able to finish because I had a family emergency and I had to stop midway through. So I didn't want to do a review, but after looking over the footage, this car is so interesting. There's so much fun things to talk about that I think I'm going to go for it. So there's a couple of things missing, but bear with me. So let's start off by talking about price, because I think that'll limit our expectations just a little bit. This is a full-size luxury sedan, and it MSRPs for about $38,000, which is a, a pretty penny. So there's plenty of options for us to uh, discuss and take a look at together. So let's start with performance. This is a rear-wheel drive vehicle. It comes with an 8-speed shiftable automatic transmission and a 3.6-liter V6. You can actually upgrade this to a V8 if you want to go with the Platinum Edition, but I wasn't that lucky. With the V6, you get an impressive 292 horsepower and some decent gas mileage. Remember, this is a full-size sedan, so it's a big vehicle, and it gets 18 miles per gallon in the city, 27 on the highway with a combined miles per gallon of about 21, and you have an 18.5 gallon fuel tank. Uh, that gas cap is located on the passenger side, and it does have that uh, capless technology that I've grown to really, really love. So I was lucky enough to have this car for about two days, and during that time I was behind the wheel for, I'd say, at least four hours. So I got a lot of time in this car, and I think the one thing I was most impressed with is the handling. you got to remember, this is a full-size sedan, so you don't expect it to go around corners very smoothly. But uh, this one does. I actually found driving this to be quite a bit of fun, uh, not only because you can corner really nicely, but because the acceleration is actually pretty decent. So that's just me. I'm not super picky when it comes to performance. You might feel differently, but at least in my opinion, I think this one is fine, and uh, you won't have any major complaints about drivability. But enough about performance. Let's jump inside so we can take a look at all the great features that are in this car. First off, the seats are electronically adjustable, including lumbar support, which as I get older, I really appreciate, especially during long trips. Uh, also, this, the actual steering wheel is adjustable through an electronic control, which is kind of fun to play around with. I actually kind of like that you can do micro adjustments kind of on the fly while you're driving. It's a nice feature to have. And then the steering wheel is a nice circular shape with a number of buttons on it. On the left-hand side, you have buttons to interact with the entertainment features and your phone. On the right-hand side are the cruise controls. I like these quite a bit because you can tap that set plus or set minus button and just edge the car up one or two miles per hour. It's actually nice to play around with on long trips. Um, also, let's take a look at the key fob while we're here. It's a good shape, good weight. Uh, I like mine a little bit heavier than normal, and this one has that... Uh, five buttons on the front, really nothing on the back, and if you'll notice, there is a remote start feature, which is great. Because you get a key fob, this is a push-button start. It's just a circular button right on the uh, center console, and the car boots up pretty quickly. Up above the steering wheel, you get uh, two nice-sized gauges, and then a pretty decent-sized digital display right in the center. I like to keep it on miles per hour, the speedometer setting, because uh, I like how big the font is, so it's easy to view. But there's also a ton of great features in here. You can cycle through a lot of menus and see a lot of great information about the vehicle as you're driving it. And then shifting your gaze up towards the ceiling, there's a number of buttons up here. Pretty much everything you expect on a luxury car. Right, you have lights to illuminate the cabin, a decent sized uh, sunglass holder, buttons to program your garage doors, because it's a luxury car. I'm assuming you have multiple garage doors. And then my favorite controls, uh, the controls to open up the enormous uh, moonroof that's available on this vehicle. And it is pretty big. It's in two sections, covers pretty much the entire roof of the car, and it's fantastic. So I think what I'm most impressed with is that the, uh, the ceiling of this car, it just looks like a normal ceiling on a vehicle. So you don't even realize that there's a moonroof there until you open it up. And then it just keeps opening and opening and opening. It really is fantastic. It's a ton of fun to drive around with the whole thing opened up, especially on a nice day. All right, but I'll stop gushing about the moonroof. Let's uh, shift gears and shift our focus a little bit downward so we can start talking about the center console on the 300C. So on the top of the center console is this beautiful analog clock. I just think it's misplaced because there's a digital clock right below it. I don't really like that design choice, but it does appear to be made out of really nice materials. 
The touchscreen itself is actually very nice. I love that there are these dedicated buttons, I guess menu icons, on the bottom of the screen to help you navigate to everything that's important. Honestly, I was able to find everything I needed within one or two quick clicks, uh, which is nice, because I hate having to search for features buried in deep menu structures. Below the touchscreen are the climate controls. These were great. I especially like that when you adjust the temperature, you get a nice pop-up window on the center display so you can see exactly what temperature you're setting the car at. Um, also, it's nice that uh, everything has real big controls, so it's really easy to operate. And then below there, you get a storage area with a power port. Um, honestly, this feels a lot like it used to be an ashtray and hasn't been redesigned since, especially since my cell phone, which is a little larger than most phones, but still, it doesn't come anywhere near to fitting in here, which is slightly annoying. Behind there is the gear shift. It's in the form of a dial, which I like because it's new and different, but I understand if you don't like it. Same thing goes with the parking brake. It's a push pedal parking brake, which doesn't seem to fit very well with the dial thing. I would have thought they would have put an electronic parking brake on the 300C, but they didn't. Also, since I'm complaining, um, this little storage area on the side of the gear shift is too small for my phone, so again, it's just slightly annoying. I think it could be designed a little bit better. But thankfully behind there, there's a nice set of two cup holders that are designed very well because they have a slot that's perfect for a cell phone. So there is a place to keep your phone while you're driving the 300C. All right, sorry for all the complaining. I'll stop because there's a lot of great features inside the center armrest, an auxiliary jack, USB port, memory card port, and a power port all in here, along with a little bit of modular storage, which uh, I really like because I like to keep things organized. And then shifting your gaze over to the glove box. Again, really nice because it has some shelves in it that allow you to organize all the stuff that you keep in here. Um, I really like this. It's also lined in a nice felt, so it feels just a little bit high-end. So that's all the major highlights of the front seats, at least the ones I was able to film. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's jump in the back seat and take a look at all the great amenities that your passengers are going to get to enjoy on this vehicle. First off, and probably most importantly, legroom is abundant. I'm six feet tall. This is a full-size sedan, and there's plenty of space between my knees and that driver's seat. Also, it's great to see that on the back of the center armrest for the front seat passengers, there's a lot of great features. Uh, heated seat controls, two USB ports, and then a control for the shade on the rear window of the vehicle. And here's that shade. It's a little bit slow to activate, but uh, I think it's kind of a cool feature to have, especially if you plan on having a lot of passengers in your vehicle. But regardless of how many people you have traveling with you, when you do have passengers, I think they'll enjoy that there is a center armrest back here. It folds down really easily. It includes two decent sized cup holders and then a small storage area that's a little bit shallow, but I think is perfect for a cell phone or two or maybe a tablet computer. So that's pretty much everything in the back seat, and that leaves only the trunk space for us to talk about. So let's pop it open and take a look. Honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed with the amount of space back here. The wheel wells really do infringe on the space quite a bit, but with that being said, I really think you're going to have no problems. It's a big enough space to get a bunch of suitcases back here or do your daily grocery shopping, all that stuff. No problems at all. I also like that there are these little hooks on the sides of the trunk space that will enable you to tie stuff down in case you're hauling a lot of things that are loose. All right, so that's the trunk space, and that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2017 Chrysler 300C. One last thing I wanted to point out is this weird location of the gas cap release. Right, it's on the door itself, tucked way back in the back corner. That's how you open up the gas cap. That's pretty annoying, trust me on that. But the rest of the vehicle is actually really, really nice. And uh, i really grown fond of this vehicle after driving it for about two days. Uh, I'm pretty sure I put over 400 miles on it, and all that time it was super comfortable. It's a really nice full-size sedan. So with that being said, uh, really what you should be asking me right now is, would I recommend this car to you? Yes or no? Yes. Look, this is a great sedan. It's got a lot of fun features to play around with. For a rental, this is perfect. For two days, I was really happy. Though, if I was going to buy a car, I'm not sure I would go with this one. There's just too many design choices that I find a little bit irritating. 
That's me though. I mean, I review cars on YouTube and drive a lot of them, so I'm a little bit picky when it comes to design choices. Maybe you don't care. Anyway, that's my take on the 300C. If you feel differently, I would love to hear from you. Please leave me a comment below. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for bearing with me on this one. I know some of it was a little bit choppy and I was missing some key shots, but I think it's, uh, I think it's good enough because I really did want to share this one with you. Anyway, that's it for rental car number 91. I hope you join me next time when I review rental car number 92. That'll be the 2018 Audi A6. I'll see you then.